All right, you guys, it's a very uncertain time right now because of the coronavirus and everything that's being affected, whether it's your health or your money. The world is just, it's insane right now. It's crazy. But one thing is true that I believe in the American economy enough to tell you that we're going to be okay. I promise we are going to be okay. There is hope still when it comes to your money. Now, there are things that we cannot control what goes on statewide or in Washington. But there's a lot of things that we can control. And what we can control is what happens in our homes and our personal finances. So making sure that we don't make decisions based on fear, but on facts. So this spring, all of the episodes of The Rachel Cruz Show were shot before all this happened. And you'll see that I was pregnant during it too, and I'm not anymore. Uh, but it, it, it still works. I mean, all the content in these episodes, they still ring true. So no matter what is happening in the economy, things might be a little bit harder at times for sure. But I hope this content brings you hope. I hope it brings you life. And I hope it brings you some really great tactics to help you with your money. So here's today's episode. Diapers, snacks, clothes, shoes, sports, more snacks, school projects, music lessons, after school programs, summer camps, kids cost so much money, but they don't have to. So today I'm gonna to show you how to save money on your kids. So it doesn't matter how old they are or what they're interested in, kids can cost a lot of money. Listen, you're taking care of a human being and that's awesome, but it doesn't have to be so expensive. So today I'm gonna show you some big ways that you can save money on your kids. We're gonna cover things that you don't need to waste your money on for a new baby. And then a few things that I personally cannot go without. You're gonna hear about the best ways your kids can go to college without going into debt. And plus I've got ABC correspondent Lindsay Davis here to share her message about helping your kids focus on what really matters and it doesn't cost anything. And since my kids are still little, I asked you guys to share your best money-saving tips for school-age kids. And as always, you came through. So we'll get to those later. But right now, I'm in the season of life that is all about baby. Yes, third time around. And let me tell you, I've learned a few things. So there's a lot of things that people tell you that you have to buy. And you feel this pressure to spend all this money on stuff. And then at the end of the day, you look and you're like, I wasted so much money on all this stuff for a new baby. <sighs> it's, it's a hard reality. So let's just get the record straight. Because there are four things, in my opinion, again, these are all my opinion, that you do not need for a new baby that you do not need to waste your money on. Number one, a wipe warmer. No. They're fine. I promise, they are fine. I don't care if it's 3 p.m. or 3 a.m. They're fine. Unless you got a wipe warmer for a shower gift and you got it for free, then sure, you can use it. Don't go buy one. No, 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 no. You don't need to waste your money on that. Number two, expensive baby clothes. Listen, in an hour, they're gonna outgrow the clothes, okay? So they usually wear an outfit, especially that first year, like once or twice. I had so many clothes from Amelia, so many clothes. And then I passed them on to Caroline. And now that it's a boy, I just consigned 187 items. And I was so excited, but guess what? Only 86 sold. So now I'm stuck with 100 items <laughs> I can't use that I bought that has literally been used once. So someone at Goodwill in Franklin, Tennessee is gonna be very happy if they have a little girl because there's gonna be a lot of cute baby girl clothes. But again, I wasted so much money on baby clothes. It's just so sad. Number three, in the same genre, don't waste your money on baby shoes. No, no baby shoes. When your baby can't walk, your baby doesn't need shoes. And yet people spend so much money on name brand shoes like Uggs and Nike and like all this. And yeah, I guess it's kind of cute to have like a little two week old and a pair of high tops, but I don't think so. I don't think, I don't think it's that like cute because they're gonna outgrow them. Like in an hour, they're not gonna need the shoes and the baby can't walk. Do you remember that? Like they can't walk. So don't waste your money on baby shoes. And last but not least, in my opinion, again, the diaper genie. Yeah, you know, uh, just a Publix 
bag, a Kroger bag, a Whole Foods bag, a grocery bag, anything that you can just throw old diapers in and then throw it away at the end of the day or in the midday. It's all you need. You don't need a fancy little thing for your diapers, okay? Just get a trash bag. It's fine. It's all good. Now, there are some things that you really do need. And again, this is all my opinion, but things that are great investments that will make your life easier if you have a new baby. Number one, the sleep sack swaddle. Yes, you zip them up. They got those little Velcro flaps. You put their little arms down and they sleep. Oh, and they sleep so well. Swaddling, it's the best thing, especially when they're newborns. They sleep really, really well. So invest in a good swaddle. Number two, Aquaphor. We have tubes of Aquaphor at our house. Lots and lots and lots of Aquaphor because Aquaphor solves anything from chapped lips to diaper rash to whatever you need, it solves it. We've convinced our kids that Aquaphor literally solves everything. That Amelia had a mosquito bite the other day. She was like, I need some Aquaphor on it. I was like, oh, poor thing. You don't know it doesn't take away the itch, but you believe it solves it solves even a mosquito bite. So Aquaphor though, really, you it's the best thing. So get a bunch of Aquaphor. Also, cloth diapers for your burp cloths. That's right, like Gerber has a brand and it's a white cloth diaper, but don't use it for the diaper, use it for the burp cloth because when they spit up, it absorbs so much. And they're super cheap, you can buy them in bulk. I love it. Next, I'm gonna get some haters on this next one, but I'm totally confident and okay with it. But baby-wise, yeah, it was something I could not live without. It's like a $10, $15 book on Amazon and it helps you sleep train your baby. In fact, the subtitle is On Becoming Baby Wise, giving your infant the gift of nighttime sleep. And not just your infant, but you. Yes, parent, new parent of little child. Yes, you get the gift of nighttime sleep. I'm all about sleep training. It's one of my spiritual gifts. I say it all the time. I could be a travel agent or a sleep trainer for a baby. I, it's what I'm good at. It really is. And so I could not live without it. And again, this is totally to each its own. Some people hate the idea of sleep training. That's fine. If it's not in your natural bent, don't do it. Don't do it because it may drive you crazy. But for Winston and myself, we like thrive on this kind of stuff. And it's helped us. Both of our babies have slept through the night at eight weeks. And it works, it does, it really works. But you gotta be committed, okay? You gotta be committed. Some people say, yeah, I kinda did baby wise-ish and it didn't work. I'm like, yeah, that's the ish mentality. Like that's when people say like, we do the Dave-ish plan, like we're kinda getting out of debt. Yeah, 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 no, 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 you gotta be committed. So if you do baby wise, you gotta commit. All right, and the final, probably the most important thing that you need to take care of while you have an infant is making sure that you have term life insurance. Not your baby doesn't need term life insurance. <laughs> you need term life insurance. So with all the new things that parents have going on, oh, there's so much. It's not usually something that people think about needing. So it is so, so important. Even if you're just thinking about starting a family, be thinking about term life insurance. And it isn't something only parents who work outside the home need. Even if one parent stays at home, you both need to make sure that you have life insurance. Because let's be honest, stay-at-home parents, they do a lot for their families. And the bottom line is you need to make sure your loved ones are protected. Winston and I personally love working with Xander Insurance. They make the process super easy. They will walk with you through every step of the way, help shop around for the best rates, and make sure that your family's getting the right amount of coverage. So go to xander.com or click the link in the show notes to get started today. Okay, babies, they're an area I feel like I'm an expert on. I've been doing it for a little while now. But once your kids hit elementary school and beyond, it's like a whole other level of parenting. So I consulted my Facebook group to share some of their expert tips on saving money in this stage of life. So here's what you guys had to say. Allison said, I'm a mom of two boys, ages 11 and six, and you best believe the six-year-old's clothes were once worn by his older brother. Amanda said, limiting extra school activities to just a few. April said, buy snacks in bulk, put half of them in the pantry, and then hide the other half in a stockpile in the basement. If they can see it, they will eat it all in one setting. It's really good advice. Even for your husband, it's probably great advice too. <laughs> Rachel said, consignment for kids. That's not me, Rachel, it's another Rachel, but yes, totally agree. And clearance, buy next year's clothes. Both my girls are in the same size clothes. Heather said, I say no a lot, but we find a lot of free things and still have the things we need. Teaching them that need trumps want is what's really important right now. 
Candace said, I started my seven and nine-year-olds on commission. Now my seven-year-old wants something, I just ask if she has the money. No more begging. My nine-year-old never really begged for stuff before, but he has a bit of cash sitting in his room. I love that. That's amazing, Candace, because I talk about that in Smart Money, Smart Kids, putting your kids on commission. And I actually have a savings printable that your kid can color in when they're saving up for something. So click the link in the show notes for that. Stephanie said, we have a 10-year-old son. We save money by going to eat at restaurants that kids eat free, so our bill is less expensive, but we still get to eat out as a family. You guys, these are great tips, great money-saving tips for kids. I love it. Okay, one way to save money on your kids is to not pay for their college. (laughs) Because, by the way, you are not a bad parent if you can't pay for your kid's college. Now, obviously, we walk you through the baby steps. We want you to be debt-free, funding retirement, and funding kids' college. Yes, that is the goal. But if you don't get there, it is okay. And let me tell you, it is possible for your child to pay for their own college. So coming up are a few stories to prove it. So my parents had always told us, like, if you're going to school, you're going to pay for it yourself. So I went to the scholarship office at um, the community college I went to. And at the time, I was under 25. And if you're under 25, your parents' income counts against you. So she told me, in order to get any sort of scholarship or financial aid, I needed to bring in my dad's tax returns. So I went in there and I handed her my dad's tax returns and she looked at it, she laughed, handed it back to me and said, I can't help you, honey. And sat back down and started typing. And I was just like crushed. I was like, they can't help me. I don't have the savings for this. I knew I was not going to be able to afford to go to school without a lot of scholarships. I applied for scholarships like it was going out of style. Like the debt snowball, there's kind of a scholarship snowball where if you have one scholarship and then you can put that in your next um, scholarship application, it gives you more legitimacy and you're more likely to get the next scholarship. And then on the third scholarship you can put that you got two others and you're more likely to get um, the next scholarship. So that's what I ended up doing. I got tons of scholarships, not because I was so much more qualified than everyone else, but just because it gave me legitimacy. Graduating without debt has allowed me to do so many things in life. My husband and I have cash flowed a car and paid off $30,000 on our house in the last year and saved for renovations. None of that would have been possible if we were under tons of student loans. Whenever my mom sat me down and talked to me about college, we started talking about scholarships, and I kind of thought that was the only option. Um, Basically, my freshman year of high school, she sat me down and said, Christina, I love you and I believe in you, but there's just no way that I can support you financially once you graduate from high school, so you've got to figure out your own way to pay for college. So she introduced me to scholarships and told me that if I worked really hard that I could get it paid for, um, get college completely paid for with scholarships. So we just kind of went on that journey. We read every book we could find on the topic. We talked to alumni who had won scholarships. We just did as much digging as we possibly could. So we put together a strategy and throughout high school, I was just really strategic about what kind of things I did, um, making sure I volunteered a lot, which I loved. I I just really built my resume to not only be enjoyable throughout high school, but also to stand out in the scholarship application process. I talked to a lot of kids who are freshmen in college and they were blindsided by the cost of an education. And I think that's a really big struggle. So I always encourage parents to have very real conversations with their kids about finances early on, even if they can't pay for their college education and it feels awkward, just go ahead and have those conversations so that the kid has enough time to prepare and come up with different strategies. I mean, if you spend two hours applying for a scholarship and you win $1,000, that's like making $500 per hour. You know, that's more money than you're gonna make in pretty much any other part-time job in high school. So go ahead and give it a shot and put yourself out there. The fact that I went to college without student loans has been amazing. It's allowed me the freedom to build my own business after college. And if I had debt leaving college, I wouldn't be able to have the freedom to pour back into other people and do something that I'm really passionate about. I knew that it's a possibility you could have student loans, but in my family, that was never an option. So it was either go to school and work for it or don't go to school and choose something else. So I did the one thing I said I would never do, which was live at home and go to school. Throughout college, I worked and had two to three part-time jobs. And then by the time I got to senior year, scholarships covered my entire senior year. Yeah, and I I paid for college. Um, Well, I've 
I've had a job since I was, or had jobs since I was 14 years old and just, I've always worked and, and saved. Um, my university work, I did it all online. So I was able to work and then do that when I was off. The way my parents helped me was providing a place to live through mm -hmm. college. And that's, that's a huge money saver. I couldn't have graduated debt free if I had lived um, elsewhere on my own or on campus, so. I think in our society, in our culture, parents have a standard that they feel like they have to meet, that if they don't send their kid to college, they're somehow a failure as a parent. And so I think comparison really creeps in. And so when it comes to that, I think that parents need to take a step back and see what is, what is true success as a parent. And that's instilling work ethic and generosity and responsibility into your child. College is not a promised land and it's not a golden ticket to success. So who your child is is more important than them getting a four year degree. So our life now as being out of school and debt free, we kind of sat down. We've been married for four months. Hmm. There's just freedom and there's just peace. There's no pressure of can we pay the bills or can we pay down our loans and everything. Like you get to choose what you spend your money on and choose what to save for. Everybody talks about the post-grad life. You're like, oh my gosh, it's so hard to be in the workforce. It's so hard. We were like, this is a breeze. This is so fun because we don't have to, we don't have to go to school and work two or three jobs or all that. Like, it's just, it's a break to us. So it's kind of opposite of a lot of people that we know, but man, it's, it's a fun life. See, I told you there is proof that your child can go to college debt-free, even if you're not able to help. See? It's an amazing thing. Okay, guys, we've talked a lot about how to save money for your kids today, but you know that I love to get to the heart of every issue we talk about because where you spend your money reveals what you truly value in life. And kids are a great thing to value, obviously, but you don't have to spend a ton of money to raise good humans, which is exactly why I'm bringing on Lindsay Davis today to talk about how to do just that. Lindsay, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. So fun. You are like one of my favorites because I love thank GMA. You. It's my morning show. Okay. It's what I watch. Glad to I... hear that. Yes. And thank you. ABC. <laughs> ABC is part of my heart. Um, so you're a working mom. Working mom. Yes. But whenever I have moms on that have full-time jobs, I'm always like, okay. So I love like tips and tricks of like how you do it. So like what are your what are a couple of things that you like— think about when you when you think about being a working mom that are kind of like principles right. in your life? Well, I think I have become um, a master multitasker. Yes. And so, you know, while I'm, you know, working on a story, I'm also making sure that, you know, things are taken care of at home with my son and soccer and after school programs and all of that. And just doing more than one thing uh, at the same time is just, it kind of becomes a constant. Yes. And I think something you just like put your head down and just do, totally. right? It's totally. not really a, uh, you know, writing out the things to-do list as much as it is just like, we got to do this. You, and yeah, there's not, there's not even time. Yeah, right. absolutely. Right. So on this show, we talk a lot about money mm -hmm. and talking about the, the value of even just giving. Yeah. And when you give to others, you really are valuing that person a right. lot. And so you're really passionate about teaching kids about valuing other people. For and sure. so I just want to know, like, where did that all come from for you? Well, one thing I'll say, you know, especially having a child, it has, tr it has made me better. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one thing I started right before my son was born was a holiday charity event. This was a uh, like a love project that it became more important for me once I had a child mm. so that he would see me and my husband doing this. And so that now he's excited about giving yes. and, you know, even we'll round up his toys and like things that he might not be using. And then we'll go out shopping and say like, well, what would you like? You know, as a four-year-old boy, what do you think that another uh, five-year-old boy would like? And then he has to give it away. The thing that he would like want the most and give it away. And I think that that is what fulfillment is. Mm -hmm. That is what is really being rich, right? In the yes. end, if you're as long as your needs can be met, right? And then it, it, it then that really is like the greatest thing, right? About um, when you when you have, and even when you don't have, but being able to to give um, to other people. And I think that that's just such an important message. If there are like three things that I can impart to my son, that is one of the top ones. Yes. Oh, I love that. I'm not living with that open hand. But you wrote a book, One Big Hearts. Yes. 
which I was just telling you before we started this, that like even the illustrations, you guys are just, it's like, it's so great. Okay, so tell me, tell me about the book. Yeah, so One Big Heart, a celebration of being more alike than different. Um, I think that, you know, I call it a reinforcement for children of what I think that they already know. Because inherently, you know, people will often say that, you know, kids don't see color. And I totally disagree with that. I think that kids do see color. Mm-hmm. They just don't assign a value to it. It's quite often mm-hmm. adults who do that. And adults that make the different separation and like, oh, we're different because of this. And so because I do believe that kids see color, I wanted to create a book where we would talk about it. And it's not like the elephant in the room that you just like are like, well, they're too young to know and talk about. So it's like, hey, we do have different Mm. skin colors and we have different features and we have different likes and dislikes and personalities. We have different backgrounds and beliefs, right? Mm, But, you know, God gave us all this special gift. He gave us one big heart and that's the most unique part because that's where the love starts. Yes. Yes. That is so, so good. What it does, it's just like, it brings back the value system of like, I feel like what we were created with, right? Mm. And I feel like we get tainted in our culture and our world by everything from social media, media, all of it. And I'm like, no, when you go back to the basics of how you were created, like what you're saying, I'm like, it's just a beautiful thing. And to be able to instill that in your kids and letting them see the value in others. So how do we teach our kids to assign, not assign a value to things that don't matter? I think that the main thing is exposure. Mm. I think that kids need to see children, adults, people who look like them and who don't look like them. You know, a lot of people have gotten the book and people, their children have said like, this person looks just like me and they celebrate that. And I think that should be celebrated. Mm. But I think also what we should look at is kids who don't look like them and seeing that and normalizing that, Mm -hmm. right? And so I think that if you happen to live in an area where the, you know, children are not very diverse, whether it's at, you know, school or the supermarket or church or synagogue, then I think that as parents, it's our job to make sure that we're looking in the toolbox to figure out what else can we show our children. So books and toys, Mm. you know, the dolls that you get, they don't often all have to look just like your child. I think that it's really important, especially if you don't live in a diverse area, to make sure that the books and the characters in the books um, reflect who they are and don't. You know, Mm. there was an essay a while ago that I'd read. It was windows, mirrors, and sliding glass doors. And the idea is that children need the mirror so they can see themselves reflected in books. They need a window so they can peer into a world that may be unfamiliar with their own. And if that window really works, it's able to be a sliding glass door to transport them into that world, right? And so that's how we can so we can see books as ways to expose our children. And I think that that's where it starts because, you know, as you look at like hate crimes that are on the rise in this country, for example, mm. um, a lot of that I think comes from the unknown, fear of the unknown. Mm-hmm. And so if if the child is exposed to people who are, have different cultures, different beliefs, different religions, I think that commonality, again, you won't decide it's this we versus them, us that's versus right. they attitude. Yeah, because the unknown is what creates that scariness yes, almost. Yes, exactly. And you just remove that right. completely by normalizing it. Right. And so, yes. oh, it's so good. Oh, Lindsay, you guys, seriously, check it out. One Big Heart, beautiful, beautiful book. Not just the illustrations, but obviously the message uh, that's in it is just absolutely fabulous. So thank you so much thank for coming you. on. We appreciate so appreciate it. And you can get this wherever books are sold. All right, what an awesome episode. Now, even if you're not a parent right now, I hope that you can tuck some of these tips away for later because hopefully they will help you. And let me just say, parents out there, you're doing better than you think you are. Some days the struggle is real, but you're doing a great job. And remember with kids, more is caught than taught. Thank you so much to Lindsay Davis for coming on and sharing her incredible heart. And if you've not checked out the podcast version of my show, make sure to do that. It's really fun. And make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow my Facebook page for more great money tips. Now, if you're looking for the free savings printable or anything that I mentioned on the show today, you can find the link in the show notes. And as always, make sure to take control of your money and create a life you love.